here I am once again in the slot following Brian Timoney, which is like following Hendrix at Woodstock, but <laughs> I'll do my best. Um, but Brian actually gave me a great lead in here because I am going to be talking about window functions, but I'm also going to be talking about ST underscore functions. So I don't know, maybe I lose points because of that, but we're all, we're all post experts here. So we actually like that, right? Anyway, uh, today, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm Martin Davis. I work at Crunchy Data on PostGIS and GEOS and generally spatial goodness. Um, I'm talking today about a new feature in PostGIS called uh, simple, feature, simple Polygonal Coverages. I actually talked about this a bit last at last year's PostGIS day, um, but I'm talking again about it because it's now a shipping product. You can go right now and download the latest version of PostGIS and try this out as I talk. So what are polygonal coverages? Probably most people are familiar with this idea. It's basically a, <coughs> a uh, technically it's a, it's a function that maps values from its range for any position in its spatial domain. Um, in in sort of simple terms, it's a set of adjacent non-overlapping polygons that cover a particular area. So the kinds of things we're talking about are cadastral parcels, political jurisdictions, land use, geological regions. There's all kinds of data sets which uh, fall into a coverage model. So classically, um, polygonal coverages are, have been represented using a full-blown topology model. Um, people might remember a little software product called ArcInfo. That was how it models spatial data. And PostGIS has a, uh, a built-in topology model, which follows the ISO SQL MM topology model uh, that lets you model coverages as well. Uh, when you do that, you wind up with four different tables um, and some metadata tables and a bunch of functions to let you manipulate coverages. So this is great if you need all that um, functionality. Um, there's reasons why you might want to do that, but sometimes you just want things to be simpler. We like simple. So this concept is let's model a polygonal coverage as just a bunch of separate polygons using OGC simple features polygons. So a coverage is just a single table of polygons or multi-polygons with attributes. There's no explicit topology. Um, the model supports holes and disjoint regions. And one of the nice things about it is it works with all existing functions and, and tools that work, already work with PostGIS. And like I said, this is now shipping. It's in PostGIS 3.4. Um, and you got to make sure you get GEOS 3.12, the latest version of GEOS as well. So you might be thinking, well, what's the big deal? We can already model tables with polygons in them. But the fact is, uh, in order to have a coverage, um, you need to have that implicit coverage topology. And you also want functions to actually do coverage operations, such as union and simplification. Um, to do that without the, the functions that we're that we're now shipping, um, has, has really been difficult. It's, it's, you, can, you can do some of them with really complicated SQL, but you're not going to get good performance, and it's really hard to code up. So now you can build a table, you can convert or confirm that it's a coverage, and then you get a set of really easy-to-use functions that have really high performance because of the coverage topology. So the first thing you need to do is determine whether you actually have a coverage. Um, Coverage validity is required for the correct operation of the functions. And also, if to have an accurate model, you, you want to make sure that you have non-overlapping polygons. Um, so the, the simple rules for coverage, uh, the, the polygons in it have to be valid, they have to be non-overlapping, and they've got to be edge matched. So every where the polygons touch, the vertices have to match exactly. And that's really important for uh, being able to carry out the, the coverage operations. Um, so to test validity, uh, we're going to take a, a set of polygons, probably the whole table, but it could also be just a, a subset of the table. And we're going to validate each polygon against its neighbors to determine whether it's uh, coverage valid. And if we find errors, 
we can actually report them by showing the lines that are in error. So the lines that cross um, or that maybe have in, in match, unmatched uh, vertices. So this is exposed as a function called ST coverage invalid edges. And yes, it's a window function. And the reason it's a window function is because it operates over all of the polygons in the table. Um, and it returns a value for each individual polygon. And when you use a window function, you can get those individual values out. And you can also include uh, additional polygon attributes, such as the ID of the polygon. So that gives you context um, uh, telling you which uh, polygons might be invalid. Uh, when, you, when you run this function, um, it checks the entire set of polygons. And for invalid ones, it returns a multi-line string showing the errors. Or if the polygon's valid, it just returns a null. So if you just want to check that all of your polygons in a table are valid, then you can use this little SQL snippet here. You just run coverage invalid edges and you use the, uh, the SQL all, um, I guess that's an aggregate function to check that every, uh, every return value is null. And if you get a true back from this, you know that your coverage is valid. So the, like I mentioned before, um, coverages support having holes and gaps. Uh, you generally want that because you might want to model lakes or you might want to have um, disjoint polygons or disjoint regions of polygons. But narrow gaps and holes are often errors in your coverage data. So you can also supply a distance tolerance to coverage invalid edges, and it will report gaps that are narrower than that distance. Um, that works pretty well. It can produce false positives if you have um, uh, very, sort of narrow gores on the edge of your coverage, which you're actually okay with, but this is still going to flag them. But it will still give you a good report about um, any gaps in your coverage. So once you, if you do find that you've got an invalid coverage, of course, what you next thing you want to do is to clean it. Um, that's not actually uh, provided yet with PostGIS. Uh, that's coming soon, hopefully. Um, but there are external tools that you can use to uh, to fix a coverage. So you can use the QGIS geometry checker. Grass has a, a tool called v.clean. There's a tool called PP repair, and Map Shaper can also um, clean coverage data. So you have to run these externally to PostGIS and then re-import the data. But we are going to be working on providing a, a function that runs right in PostGIS to clean your coverage data. So let's talk about uh, operations that you can run on coverages. Um, a really common operation is to union the polygons that are in a coverage. Uh, so there's a function called ST coverage union. Now, in this case, it's an aggregate function, um, and it takes a subset of polygons and, uh, and unions them. And because it knows it's working on a, a valid coverage of polygons, it can run a lot faster than the, the, uh, the, other, the original ST union function. So for instance, here's a data set of BC voting areas, which is... Uh, 5,600 polygons with over 2 million vertices. Uh, we can run ST union to union the whole thing, and that takes about five seconds. If we use ST coverage union, it takes under half a second. So it's 12 times faster to use ST coverage union. Um, so that's really great. That means with that kind of performance, you can actually build ST coverage union into views. So you can do things like rollups. Um, as, as, a, as a live view rather than pre-computed data set. So here's an example of rolling up voting areas to form electoral districts. So grouping by the vo voting area code and then running the union um, over that set of polygons, over each of those sets of polygons. Another uh, popular operation is simplification on coverages. Um, Paul calls this the killer app for coverages. <laughs> um, it's uh, there's there's a bunch of tools that have that do this 
externally, uh, MapShaper, TopoJSON, uh, Grass, VJOT, Generalize. Um, they can all uh, simplify coverages, maintaining the uh, coverage topology. Um, before, there was really no way to do this in PostGIS. Uh, people tried different things like, I mean, just doing it piecewise using SD Simplify, and obviously that doesn't work. Um, there was another technique where you could dissolve all the polygons down to the lines and then simplify the lines and repolygonize, but that's really painful to do. So now there's just one single function called SD cover simplify that takes a tolerance and simplifies uh, the polygons. And just it's also a, a window function so that you can simplify each polygon and run a query that returns the simplified polygon and the attributes of the polygon. And it preserves the uh, topology. The output is always going to be a valid coverage, but just uh, with um, much many fewer vertices. And the, uh, the algorithm used is this Vallingham Wyatt simplification, which generally works better for areas than Douglas Poiker. Um, it, it tends to remove spikes and gores, which is usually what you want for areas. We might actually look at adding a uh, Douglas Poiker option as well. Another option to the simplify is to do inner simplification. So what that does is it just simplifies the inner shared boundaries of a set of polygons, and it does not change the external boundaries. So this lets you simplify just a portion of a coverage and ensure that the simplified polygons still match exactly with the polygons around them that haven't been simplified. So that's a, that's a net new piece of functionality that I don't think is available anywhere else. So like I said, um, the reason you might want to use simple coverages is because you get a simple geometric model. Uh, you can use it with all your existing data models and functions, and it's very performant. Um, you might choose to use a topology because if you're doing a lot of data update, uh, topology can allow you to maintain your, your coverage topology automatically. Uh, it also lets you create hierarchies of uh, regions. And it lets you, a big difference is it lets you add attributes to the actual edges, the shared edges of the polygons. So your choice, you can go simple or you can go uh, powerful and complex. So there's uh, some future ideas that we're going to be working on. Um, more flexible validation to, so you can possibly run validation within, easily run it within triggers on the table. Um, some improvements to simplification, some, some ideas that came up at Phosphor GNA just a couple of weeks ago were um, to allow anchor points uh, in your coverage so that you can ensure those anchor points were not simplified. Um, and we might add an ability to remove small features uh, once they've been simplified. And there's a bunch of possible operations, such as sliver merging, uh, cleaning is a big one, precision reduction, edge extraction, and export to topo JSON potentially. And another big one that uh, people like to do is coverage overlay. And another option is potentially creating a simple linear network, which is analogous to the, the coverage for polygons. It'll be a linear network. Um, modeled as a as a table of line strings and with some functions to validate that they form a correct network and uh, we'll provide some network style functions on top of that as well. So let's see, that's all I have. Are there any questions? Or there's questions. <laughs> there are just questions I ask you all the time. When do we get coverage clean? <laughs> well, hopefully 2024 sometime. That seems like a reasonable answer. Yeah. Yeah. And we still haven't figured out our API for overlay. I hadn't thought about uh, edge extraction before as a as a useful utility, but uh, clearly as I guess the question then is what does the API for edge extraction look like? That seems a little harder. Yeah, that's true. 
have to give that one some thought. Yeah. But I can see the utility. Definitely. Yeah. Here's all the boundaries yeah. really fast. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, we have, I mean, you kind of went past it, like explicit topology models. Like what are we giving up by not having an explicit topology model? Um, giving up some support for updating hmm. uh, topology in place, topological yep. features in place. Yep. Um, the hierarchical topology, hierarchical hmm. regions could be useful. And then probably the biggest one is um, in topology, you can actually add attributes to individual edges. Right. Uh, so you can have the embedded network. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, and, and topology will model a linear network just as easily as a, as a coverage network, which is where you probably want the attributes on edges. So it's definitely more flexible. Yeah. Uh, question on the chat. Is there a way to import slash translate as retopology when importing a file to your database? <laughs> um, I think my quick answer would be yes, because one, one thing I didn't mention is that, um, well, ARC info used a full topology model, uh, Esri switched to using basically simple, simple polygonal coverage topology um, when they when they introduced uh, SDE and ArcMap. So my understanding is that a, an Esri coverage is just uh, a set of polygons. Yeah, polygons um, with quality rules. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. But hopefully, once those topology rules have been, if they've been enforced, then the the polygons should match up. Yeah. Try it and see, and let me know. <laughs>